welcome to church. Great to have you this weekend. And uh, for all of you who are in the room, welcome. For any of you who are joining us online right now, I'm very glad that you are along for the ride. And uh, it's, it's an amazing season in the life of our church. As you heard, we're talking about 21 days of prayer and fasting that we've been in over the past couple of weeks, wrapping up. This weekend is Connect Weekend, which I'm very, very excited about. You have an opportunity to join a group and get connected uh, this spring, and I'm really hoping you'll do that. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes, but we're also in week three of a series that we've called Future You. It's all about helping us start 2022 strong so that we can finish the year strong. And we've been talking about what are the decisions that we could make on the front end of this year to ensure that when we Uh, Get to December and we look back, we're not saying, man, I'm glad that's over, but we're saying I grew this year. Things changed, things got better. Even if they didn't get better in my circumstances, they got better in the center of me. I know a little bit more about who I am and where I'm headed. And that's what this series is all about. Does anybody else have a bad habit of hanging on to old clothes for longer than you should? Just be honest, okay, no shame in your game. If you're online right now, we know you're wearing them right at this moment. You're like... If we could see you, we would say, it's time for that to go. We know, we know, we know. So uh, I'm that way. I don't like getting rid of a piece of clothing until it's worn out. You know, it's just, I like to get every penny I paid out of it. I'm just kind of, you know, stingy that way a little bit. And I wonder how many students uh, in the room or online have ever, have ever been embarrassed by something old your parent was wearing? Anybody just, (laughs) any students, any parents in the room or online ever been bewildered by everything your student wears? Just show of hands, okay, okay. All right, so we're all in this together. And what we know about this is, and you probably have, if you've been around a little bit while, a little while, done some, uh, got some years under your belt, you realize if you hold on to something long enough, sometimes it comes back into fashion. Have you noticed that? Like mom jeans and dad jeans and 80s concert t-shirts. Like if, if you held on to those uh, throughout the past couple of decades, good news, you're in style once again. Uh, or close, you know, you're, you're sort of in style. But it helps, doesn't it, to have somebody to run our fashion choices by, isn't it? Anybody else just take advantage of that? My wife and I do this for each other all the time. We, we address and we go, does, how does this look? I do that. She doesn't do that, but how does this look? And, uh, you know, it's always a little bit difficult when someone you love says, eh. Uh, but the only thing worse than thinking you look great and having to be corrected on that by someone you trust is thinking you look great only to walk out into the world and have the entire planet observe your walking wardrobe malfunction. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's good to have somebody to run our fashion choices by. And so here's my question for you today. Wherever you are in your faith journey, whether you're new to church or this is a commitment that's been in your life for a while, somewhere in between, do you have any old clothes in the closet of your life? Any bad attitudes? You don't have to raise your hand, but just... Think about it. Any dysfunctional approaches to relationships? Anybody have any of those? Any unhealthy habits? Misplaced financial priorities? See, I don't have any misplaced financial priorities. I just have misplaced money. I don't know where it is. I can't find it. Anybody have any control issues? Uh, yeah, just a few of us maybe. Is there anything from 2021 that if it continues in 22, 2022, honestly, could keep you back from the best version of you? Is there anything that you would say, if you're being honest and you weren't concerned about your reputation, you weren't trying to prove yourself, is there anything in your life that you would say, honestly, it's for the best that that not come with me into this year? Some things I just need to leave behind. And so the question is, this week three of the series, as we pursue this future us, what do we do about the old clothes, the, the things in our lives that are holding us back, maybe from everything that God has for us. And if you're here today and you don't consider yourself a follower of Jesus yet, I'm very glad you're here. And you're about to hear some insider information, okay? So this is your lucky day. Uh, You get to hear how those of us who consider ourselves followers of Jesus are called to live. And I think you could have fun tonight. If you're not a Christian, you can use some of what I'm about to say and some of what we're about to read from the Bible as a pop quiz for your Christian friends this week. And I highly recommend it. You may want to take some notes and just Uh, Just surprise some of your Christian friends this week. You're some Christian neighbors, you're out walking the dog and just go, hey, you're a Christian, what do you think about this? I think it's gonna go well. Um, And if you're new here and the reason you came to church is because something inside of you wants to change. You see some things in your life that you just know, man, my life could be better if I could grow, if I could change. 
I think this, this message today can really help you get a picture of what that can look like. And then if you just want more of God, so you're a Christian, you're a follower of Jesus, but something in you is longing to be closer to God in this, in this new year, then you came to the right place. Because what we're going to do today is run some of our faith fashion choices by God. Does that sound good to everybody? So we're going to go to God and go, hey, how's this look? What do you think about this? And uh, just hear what he has to say. So we're working our way through a little book in the New Testament of the Bible during this series called Colossians, written to a church that in some ways a lot like ours is this community of believers who were at different places in their faith, some of them brand new to faith, some of them a little bit further along. And Colossians opens by reminding all of us who have put our trust in Jesus that we have been given a new life. We don't have a slightly better life than we used to have. Jesus didn't come along, make a few modifications, and then send us on our way. But we actually have a new life, an entirely different way of living. So because that's true, that can be an instant thing. We can go from death to life in a moment, putting our faith in Jesus. But once that is true, the way we think, speak, and act, so the wardrobe of our lives begins to change as a result. And that is not always an instant process. That takes time. It's a process of growing. We've been talking about this the past couple of weeks. How do we grow in our faith. So we're going to go a little bit deeper this weekend. Here's how we grow in our faith. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Aren't you glad you came to church? This is, this is the weekend. Let's talk about it. Sounds kind of violent, doesn't it? Put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Some of us said, oh, thank God. I don't have any sinful earthly things lurking within me. That is the sinful earthly thing lurking within you, the fact that you don't think you have any sinful earthly things lurking within you. So this is intense, and it's intense on purpose. I'm not gonna dial it back, I'm not gonna soften it, because it's supposed to be this direct. It's supposed to just challenge us, arrest our attention, because what these words are saying from God's word is that there's stuff in our lives, attitudes, thought patterns, habits, actions, words that come out of our mouths, that once we find Jesus, they just don't fit us anymore. They just don't work with this new life and they they need to be not compromised with, not negotiated with. We don't need to enter into some kind of tenuous peace treaty with these things. We actually need need to eliminate them. They need to be removed from our lives. So when I was a kid, I went to summer camp one year. How many of us ever went to summer camp? And uh, I'm excited about already about our summer camp here, Rise for students. Come on, any students? Any students excited about Rise? It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. We'll get you more excited. I know it's hard in January. But I went to summer camp as a kid and the camp staff took us to go swimming in a creek one day. We did this little field trip uh, to this creek and we went to a swimming hole. But only a handful of us were willing to get in because it was so nasty. I mean, the water was gross looking. It was muddy. You couldn't see anything. And I just knew, even as a kid, I was like, there are sinful earthly things lurking (laughs) within that swimming hole. I'm not getting in. I don't care what you say. And there really were only a few uh, kids who were willing to get in the water. And the rest of us kind of stood on the bank and were like, it was nice knowing you. (laughs) And sure enough, some of the kids that swam that day got leeches on them. They're, you know, I don't know what they were thinking. The child abuse. I don't know why these <laughs> camp staff took us out there. I was just a kid. I'm just realizing now, man, this is terrible. <laughs> and I should have probably realized that when I was preparing the story. But it strikes me that there's stuff in our lives like that, right? And uh, what the Word of God is telling us is once we find Jesus... We start to recognize there are things lurking under the surface of our old lives. Let's not not go back and keep swimming in the same holes. Like, let's choose some new places. Let's let's find some fresh water. Let's, Let's enjoy the presence of God in a real way and not keep going back to those same places. So when we find Jesus, we start to learn to to not swim in the same holes anymore. And then when leeches do get on us, because that happens to all of us, we learn to get rid of them and to not keep going back to where those leeches hang out. Sometimes you got to learn the hard way, right? Like, okay, I'm a follower of Jesus, but I think I can still go to the same places and hang out with the same people and engage in the same things. And all of a sudden you go, oh, something is sucking the spiritual life out of me. What is it? I need to get it off me. And we learn as followers of Jesus that those things not only should not remain attached to us, but thank God they don't have to remain attached to us anymore. That we have the power to remove those things 
from our lives. So what are these sinful earthly things, these leeches lurking below the surface? What are the old clothes that wanna hang out in the backs of our closets? There are a lot of them, but Paul, who writes Colossians, he says, let me give you a few examples. He says, have nothing to do with this stuff. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater. You say, I'm not greedy, I'm just frugal. Uh, the word frugal in the Greek means greedy. For a greedy person, <laughs> I preach that to myself. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater. They've actually made a god out of money and possessions, and now they're worshiping the things of this world. So again, if you're new to church, this is your verse. Put this on your pop quiz for your Christian friends this week. Go ask them, how are you doing with this? And by the way, tell them it's Colossians 3.5. They'll be so impressed. And then just ask them about their sex lives, <laughs> their thought lives, and their financial lives. Oh, to be a fly on the wall this week. Everybody still good? <laughs> so we're doing this series in February. I'm very excited about it. It's called Money, Sex, Power. Can you guess what it's about? So when our team was trying to figure out a title for the series about money, sex, and power, somebody said, I have an idea. <laughs> Why don't we call it Money, Sex, Power? So we said, that's great. And we're going to break some of this stuff down and talk about it in a way that honestly is going to help you see these things differently. Because I think there's been a mistaken narrative about those three things when it comes to religion. And it's, and it's caused a lot of people to, have, to misunderstand God's approach to those three things. All three of those things were intended by God to be gifts from God to us. They just become really poor fashion choices when they become gods in our life. And when we begin to do whatever they say we should do, instead of doing what God leads us to do and submitting those things back to him. So we're gonna talk about that in February in a way, by the way, that your friends and family members who don't go to church can relate to and really help people find freedom in their lives. But for today, let me be clear. So wherever you are spiritually, let me be very clear. My opinion about how you live your life is ultimately irrelevant. Let me say that again. My opinion about how you live your life, ultimately irrelevant. But if you've decided to follow Jesus, let me tell you something. His opinion about how you, you live your life is very much relevant. And Jesus never intended to just be an accessory that gets added to our wardrobe. He intended to be at the center of our lives. And as we begin to follow him, here's what we discover. We've got some old clothes that need to go. In fact, you could put it this way, following Jesus is about out with the old. That there's some things in our lives that just, they don't fit us anymore, they don't work, they don't match our new spiritual complexion, they don't work with who we are anymore, and God calls us to remove those things from our lives. And he gives us the power to do that. We don't do that on our own, but we do that through his power. And notice the instruction in Colossians, have nothing to do with these things. Again, it's not about, well, I'm gonna just, you know, I won't wear them every day. I, I won't go there every week. I won't live that way all the time, but I'm just gonna kind of keep a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of this in my life. No, it's about this new life where we run all of our relationships and our habits and our priorities by God. We, we go, God, how's this look on me? I'm, I'm about to text this person back. What do you think? <laughs> Imagine how that would change our lives. <laughs> We just took a moment, it's like, how does this angry reaction look on me as a Christian before I press the little send? How's that look? We run all of that by God. And when God says, you know, to be honest, that does not look good on you, do you know what Christians do? We change. We go back to the closet and go, okay, that doesn't work. I'm gonna change by God's grace. We don't hide, we don't make excuses, we don't wallow in shame. We turn our hearts back toward God and we get rid of those old clothes, which I have to do on a regular basis, by the way. So if you think this is about somebody standing up here going, you need to change. This is about somebody standing up here going, I need to change. Because on a regular basis, I have to run my life by God. And I've, I've learned, man, I have to do that every day. God, how does this look? And sometimes I am happy to report. God is like, Mark, that looks so good on you. I love that humility, that generosity. You are rocking that, man. You are just killing the generosity game. Your purity, loving it, looks so good. And then other days, God is like, mm, 
Can we talk about that before you leave the house? Because I don't want the world seeing that version of you because you have my name on you. I'm your brand now. And I don't want the world thinking I, I would put that out there like that. So let's talk. And he never comes to judge or condemn me. He comes to transform me so that I better reflect the image of Jesus. And that's what it means to follow Jesus fully. This isn't about being more religious. It's not about being more conservative or restrictive. It's about fully walking in our freedom in Christ. God isn't telling us to clean out our closets because he delights in taking things from us, but because he has better things in store for us. And he knows you can't put a new you on top of an old you. That's just weird. You don't put like a shirt on top of a shirt, unless it's like this. Because these were made to go together. This is layering, people. I've learned. This. Somebody told me, well, you look better when you layer. I was like, all right, I will layer. But you don't put a new outfit on top of a complete old outfit. You've got to remove the old. We've got to take off the old before we can put on the new. And God sees a future us. And here's what his word tells us. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. When you were representing that old brand, when you were dressed in, those, in, your, in your place of slavery to sin and to thought patterns and priorities that didn't honor God and left you feeling empty and miserable, you used to do these things. But watch this. Now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other. Why? Because you stripped that off. You've stripped off your old sinful nature and all of its wicked Deeds. So some of us are going, man, you didn't get me in the first verse, but you got me now. <laughs> Paul, who wrote this now, he moves from our individual choices, I think this is so fascinating, to how we treat each other. And he begins to name some more old clothes, things like anger and rage. Anybody just on a struggle with the anger outfit? Been rocking your rage rebox lately? <laughs> Paul says we... We've got these old things that try to show up in our lives, malicious behavior, that's acting on anger. So anger can all take place just in our heads. Nobody even knows we're angry, but we're just, we're fuming inside. But then malicious behavior is acting on that. It's finding ways to make people pay. It's getting back at people. Slander is speaking badly about people behind their backs. Dirty language, foul, abusive words, lying, that's dishonesty. God says, that stuff just doesn't look good on you. It never did, but you used to be like, ah. You didn't know, but now you know. That stuff doesn't look good on you. That's not the way I designed you to live. And it's actually harming your relationships and harming your mental health and harming your emotional health when you keep going back to those same places and putting on those old clothes. Following Jesus means out with the old. There's some stuff in our lives that just doesn't belong anymore. We've been given a new life. So now it's time to live like it. No judgment, no shame, no condemnation for what we used to be and how we used to live, but we're different now. And we're called by God to live like it, out with the old. But on its own, out with the old is not enough. And there are a whole lot of us who have tried really hard to do the out with the old thing. In fact, a lot of us probably tried really hard about three and a half weeks ago to establish some resolutions for this year. And even if we don't call them that, we had some thoughts in our mind of, okay, this year, I am not gonna fight with my parents like I did last year. Now, I'm not gonna resent my spouse like I did last year. I am not gonna be so unkind behind people's backs the way I was last year. And I would imagine that for many of us, three weeks in, we're going, man, I was so sure that this year I was gonna find that place in my life where I, all of those old things were gone. But the truth is God's plan for us isn't just about cleaning out our closets. That's only the beginning. And if we just get rid of the old stuff, we won't be that much better off. And I think this is important because a lot of us have experienced this with religion. We heard, this is the message we heard. Clean up your act. Get it together. 
Get that old stuff out of your life. So we tried really hard, and then we found ourselves right back where we started, but now, on top of that, we had guilt and shame. The only thing worse than being lost and far from God is being aware that you need God, but realizing no matter how hard you try, you can never be good enough for God. And for some of us, that's where we are, where we've become aware of how much we need God. And so we try really hard. Every day, we're like, clean out the closet. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I got rid of this thing. I got rid of that thing. I got get rid of that attitude. I lived there for a lot of years, a lot of shame, a lot of condemnation. I had the right idea on the front end, got to get rid of some old stuff, but I stopped short of what God had for me. And so many of us have stopped short of what God had for us. Some of us have even given up and said, I'll never be different. I'll never change. I guess this is just who I am. Why? Because we never realize that God doesn't just ask us to get rid of the old. He gives us something new to wear. And here it is. Put on your new nature. He gave it to us, but we have to choose every day whether to put it on. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. See, God doesn't just want us to strip off our sins. God wants us to get dressed in the new nature that Jesus died and rose again to give us. He's inviting us to learn to know him and be renewed and become like him. Some of us are terrified to let go of bad habits and broken relationships and ways that we've medicated our pain because we don't believe God is able to give us something better, but I'm telling you he is. And so even when we try to get rid of the old, all we do is create a vacuum and the old creeps right back into that vacuum. The old creeps right back into that space. We clean out the closet, but we don't hang anything new in place of the old. And what happens is we're just drawn back to those same old behaviors and same old priorities, except now we feel guilty and ashamed and condemned. But the truth is following Jesus isn't just out with the old. You gotta catch this. It's in with the new. There's a new life that we've been given and every day we have a choice, not just to clean out our closets and get rid of the things that are holding us back, but we have the opportunity and the power through Jesus Christ to put on this new life. This is what spiritual transformation is all about. It's not just about getting rid of the stuff that's holding us back. It's about stepping fully into the new life that Jesus has given us. It is not about white knuckling our way forward. It's about surrendering complete control control to the God who created us and being renewed daily by him. And you can experience that this year. You can live out this new life this year. So how does it happen? How do we learn to know God and become like him? It happens in environments like this. When we worship God together and we hear the teaching of God's word, it happens when we spend time with God every day letting him search our hearts, search the wardrobe of our lives and point out what he likes and what's holding us back. And we do that without condemnation and without shame. We just run to God and say, God, here's my wardrobe. Here's my attitude. Here are my priorities. Here's the stuff that's in my life. What fits, what doesn't. I surrender control to you. It happens when we serve instead of drifting back to our old selfish ways. Happens when we give, put God first in our finances instead of being greedy and making an idol out of our money and our possessions. And it happens through relationships with a few other people who want to grow in their closeness with God. If you are a follower of Jesus, let me tell you the number one plan of the enemy of your faith, and you do have an enemy who's working against you, His number one plan is to get you in a place where you sin and then convince you to keep it to yourself. It's his number one plan. And he will tell you every lie in the book. If you admit that, you won't be welcome anymore. If you own that, people are gonna look at you different. You can do this on your own. You can manage this, you can control this, you can quit this, you can stop that anytime you want or you're the worst ever, you can never change. He'll change his lie every five minutes. The only thing he can't stand is for you to run to God and run to your relationships with a few other people who trust God. 
his big deal, his big plan is to get you alone with your sin, to get me alone with my sin, get us either ashamed or arrogant. He doesn't care which, as long as we're not honest. Honest with God and honest with a few other people. That's what Connect Weekend is all about. It's that important. This is at the center of our spiritual transformation and it's why we have J groups here. It's not a church program. It is a way of putting us in an environment on a regular basis with a few people who are going the same direction that we can begin to run our faith fashion choices by. And God can work through our community. Now that does not mean when you join a J group, you show up week one and go, hey, I brought a list of all my sins. And I'd like to have a few minutes to read through them if everyone would be so kind as to indulge me. No, don't do that. But what's beautiful about groups is we get in an environment where the people around us are just as imperfect as we are, but they are taking steps toward Jesus and we begin to get honest. And over time, as the relationship grows, we take a risk and we step out there and we say, I'm struggling with this, I'm dealing with that. And what we get back is not judgment or condemnation, but encouragement and accountability and prayer. And very often, my favorite, someone says, oh, you struggle with that? Guess what? Me too. And all of a sudden, the enemy goes, oh, that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. Because now he knows you've been honest with God. You've been honest with someone else who believes in God. His power is broken. And you're free because you're willing to bring it out of the darkness into the light, out of the back of your closet into display. Is it hard sometimes? Is it a risk sometimes? Yeah, it sure is. But the power of God is present when we are in community with each other, encouraging each other so we can grow in our faith. It's how God designed us. And we have to catch this. We have to get this. We can get rid of some of that old stuff that Paul describes in Colossians without those relationships. But we cannot put on all the new stuff God has for us without those relationships. And the reason some of us have tried and tried and tried and failed and failed and failed is because we have recognized the power of God to forgive us, but not the power of God's people to heal us. And we need God, and we need God's people. And the future you that God sees has to be lived out and experienced in community. And I'll prove it to you. Because the very next verses in this text that we're reading from in Colossians say this. Since God shows you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. All of those are relationship words. Watch this. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe, your, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be, we talked about this last week, thankful. Live in a place of gratitude that you have God and you have God's people. Now listen, you can't do any of that alone. In fact, you can't do most of that just with you and God. Most of that describes a new life that can only be lived in community. And if we try to follow Jesus alone, we're gonna end up exhausted or arrogant or blind to where we need to change or all three. But when we get in community and we do life with a few other people who are following Jesus fully, we begin to discover, hey, this is not some death-bringing, restrictive relationship we have with God where it's always just out with the old, out with the old, out with the old. No, we begin to experience in with the new. God begins to do a new work in our lives and we realize, oh, the reason God wanted me to take that particular article of clothing out of the wardrobe of my life was because he had something better for me and I could only understand Understand that in community with his people. That's how God works. And here's what God wants you to understand. He has designed a wardrobe for the future you 
And if you're willing to get rid of some of those old clothes, and if you're here, by the way, I'm not here to twist your arm. If you're here and you're like, I like my old me. Like, I, I want like all the sexual immorality, impurity, lust, greed. I want rage. I want like malicious behavior. Bring it on. If that's where you are, okay. When it doesn't work, come see me. <laughs> not if, when. But for all of us who wanna get closer to God, here's what he wants you to understand, what he wants me to understand. He sees a future us, and he's designed a wardrobe for us that if we'll get rid of some old clothes, he wants to give us some new ones. And the future you that God sees is a merciful you. Someone who's compassionate toward other people and doesn't judge them for their struggles but shows them the compassion of Jesus. And the future you that Jesus sees is a kind you, someone who's considerate about how other people feel and what they're experiencing. And the future you that Jesus sees is a humble you, someone who doesn't walk around like they own the world because they're so secure in their relationship with the one who does. And the future you that Jesus sees is a gentle you, which would change all of your relationships when you stop strutting and showing off your power and you become like Jesus. And the future you that Jesus sees is a patient you. So if you've been secretly wishing, I would move through the shirts faster. There is work left to do in your spiritual life. The future you that Jesus sees is a forgiving you. Some of you have tried over and over to forgive someone who hurt you, but you've never told another believer that you need help from God through them. And God wants to give you a new wardrobe. The future you that Jesus sees is a loving you. Someone who loves people unconditionally and doesn't consider that a weakness, but a strength. The future you that Jesus sees is a peacemaking you. Someone who soothes conflicts rather than stirring them up. The future you that Jesus sees is a grateful you. Someone who's thankful for every breath rather than cursing every problem. And the future you that Jesus sees is in the J group. <laughs> so you can't see all of what God wants to do in your life just in the mirror. You need some people to help you pick out the new stuff that God has in mind for your life and put it on. And when you start getting closer to God and closer to God's people, you can start wearing your new life. So maybe you're new to faith and uh, you didn't know this stuff. Some of this is news to you. You're like, I didn't even know that that's how I was supposed to live. And I think that's an amazing thing. I never want that to grow old for me. I love what happens for someone when they first see, man, I knew that finding Jesus changed my past, but now I see what it's like to follow him in my present. And if that's you today, take the next step, find a J group, get connected, do life with some other followers of Jesus. Don't be intimidated. Listen, don't be intimidated because you don't know the Bible as well as some people, or you don't you don't know the language as well as some people or you haven't been doing this as long as some people. We need you just as much as you need us because you remind us of what it was like for us when we first found Jesus and we can't afford to lose that passion. So bring that real authentic you into community with people who've been following Jesus for a while. Maybe you're here today or you're watching online and you're not new to faith and you do know this stuff, but you've been conveniently ignoring it. And there's some old stuff hanging in your closet and it's time to clean it out. 
It's just time to take the next step, but don't try to do it alone. That's where you've gotten it wrong in the past. Get in community, join a J group, get connected with some people, get honest about your life. Maybe you're here today, you're watching right now and you've been trying to change, but you just keep falling short and the enemy has come in with shame and he's telling you all these lies. Take a stand today, renounce the enemy's lies. God's grace has not run out. He has more than enough to cover your sin. And through his son, Jesus Christ, he died to make you whole. He can forgive whatever has happened. Take the next step, move forward, turn back to God and get in community with God's people. Join a J group, get connected. There's strength in community. And maybe you're here, you're watching online and you're doing well. You're not perfect, but you're growing in your faith. You're headed more and more toward Jesus. You're living out those things we just described. Lead a J group. Don't keep it all to yourself. Create a space where people can connect with God and connect with each other. Don't just strip off the old clothes. Put on the new ones because following Jesus is out with your old. And it's in with your new. It's in with your new attitudes. It's in with your new priorities. It's in with your new perspectives. It's in with your new relationships. It's in with your new approaches to old relationships. It's in with your future you. And if you would say today, man, I receive God's word into my life. I'm gonna apply it to my life. We just shoot your hand up, hold it up all over the room. If you're online right now, let us know you wanna be included in this prayer. And let me pray over us. Father, we love and honor you. God, our desire is to learn to know you and become like you. We know we can't do that on our own. I think all of us know we can't do it without you. But today we're being pushed maybe just a little bit deeper than that to recognize not only can we not do it without you, but there's a sense in which we can't do it without each other. We're one body and we need relationships with other people going the same direction. God, I do. Every person in this room, every person online needs those relationships. So God, I pray right now over every one of us that we would take that next step, that we would get in community, God, that we would not just hide in the safe anonymity of the big room, but we would get into the honest accountability and support of a smaller room. And I pray that as we do, you'll be present with us, that you'll bless our groups this spring, that you will change our lives, that we will learn what it means to live this new life for your glory and that you'll clothe us with everything that you always plan for us to wear. And we ask it by faith in the name of Jesus and we receive it today. For any of you who are here or watching today and you've always seen religion as a subtraction, when you think about God, you always think, oh, I know this whole deal about God is he just wants to take things out of my life. Nothing could be further from the truth because the reality is that God doesn't just wanna take things out of your life, he wants to place new things in your life because the old things honestly just aren't working. They're not his best for you, but not because he's looking down his nose at you, not because he can't wait to judge you, but because he can't wait to transform you. And he knows that you can't put a new you on top of an old you, or the old you will just come back to the surface. So he sent his son Jesus to die for your sins and to rise again to give you the power to live a new life. And you can have that new life. It's a free gift. You don't do anything to earn it. Nothing we've talked about today is something we do to earn God's love or God's salvation. But when you find Jesus, you find the power to begin to live in a new way. And if you want that today, if you want to begin a real relationship with God, I'd love to lead you in a very simple prayer. So I want to invite everyone to just block out every distraction right now, in person, online. And if that's you today, if you want to start following Jesus right where you are, whisper a prayer of faith out something like this. You can use my words if it helps you. Jesus, today I leave my old life behind. I need your forgiveness, and I know I don't have to earn it. I believe you died to give it to me. And Jesus, I want to follow you from this moment forward. So I declare you leader and Lord over my life right now. And if that's you, while everyone around you stays focused on God, if you would say, I want to be included in that prayer, I'm putting my faith in Jesus today. Will you shoot your hand up? Just hold it up high all over the room. Yeah, my faith is in Jesus today. Trusting him with my life. Yeah. And if you're watching online, make sure you share that with us. Type the word faith in the comments. 
And everybody help me. Let's put our hands together. Let's give Jesus 